All right, so on top I have 4 to the negative 1, x to the negative 3, and then y, over 4 to the negative 3, x to the second, y to the negative 6. Okay, so again, remember the only thing we are moving are our negative exponents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the ones that we are definitely not moving. On top, I am not moving this y because it is a positive exponent. There's no negative there. I'm not moving it. On the bottom, I'm not moving the x squared. It is positive. It stays there. So now I'm going to deal with my negative exponents. I look at the top. Both of these are negative. 4 to the negative 1, x to the negative 3. Or, x, yes, x to the negative 3. So I'm going to take those and I'm going to put them on the bottom. So I get 4 to the first and x to the third because it becomes positive when we move it to the bottom. These bottom, 4 to the negative 3 and y to the negative 6, I need to move it to the top to make them become positive. So I move the 4 to the third to the top, and then I have y to the 6 on top. Now I just need to simplify here. Um, I also see, let's see, I see I have a 4 to the third. Let's just multiply this out, and then we can simplify it at the end. 4 to the third is the same thing as 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times another 4, I get 64. Okay, then I have a y to the 6 and a y to the 1st. Remember, if there's no exponent there, we put that there. We just add our exponents. So I get y to the 7th. On the bottom, 4 to the 1st is 4. And then I have x to the 3rd, x to the 2nd. I combine those by adding those exponents. So I get 5. Now I notice, I look at my numbers, 64 and 4. Those still, be, still can be simplified. Therefore, I know that 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 64 16 times. Therefore, I'm left with 16, y to the 7th on top, and an x to the 5th on bottom. So you need to keep going all the way until you can simplify. Always look at your answer and say, can I simplify it any farther?